In this problem, we have a reel of mass 15 kilograms. It is resting on two rollers, um, and it's initially at rest. We apply a force of 400 uh, with a rope attached at R1, um, and given the radius of gyration, we are asked how many revolutions must the wheel complete to achieve a final angular velocity of 30 radians per second. So this is a work energy problem, and we're starting from the state where um, the reel is at rest, um, and um, we need to add a certain amount of work, so uh, force p times, this, times the distance, to achieve a final um, angular velocity of 30 radians per second. We're also assuming the rollers um, are frictionless, and um, they we can neglect their mass in terms of um, increasing their kinetic energy as well. So we're going to first look at the geometry. So we're going to be pulling um, this rope. Um, so this force P is constant. And um, applying this force along a distance, again, is going to give us the work that we uh, input into the system. Now, the distance that this um, rope uh, travels um, this, um, we can find this based on the geometry, right? Um, and this is going to be related to how many revolutions um, this wheel makes, right? Because if um, this wheel makes one revolution, um, this distance here that the rope uh, travels is going to be one circumference, right? And circumference with um, R1 because this is where the rope is attached. Uh, so we can come up with a function for the displacement um, of... Uh, that rope d, um, this is going to be equal to 2 pi r1, so this is the circumference, and then we add in the n term, and this n is essentially the number of revolutions, right, because um, we are asked in the problem to find how many revolutions must a wheel make to complete this angular velocity. Um, so this is just how many times this circumference does this rope have to travel, and again, one circumference is one revolution. So this is the number of circumferences or the number of revolutions. So this is what we are trying to solve for, right? And again, this is going to have a unit uh, of meters because it's a distance, um, and we can um, plug in um, R1, and we get that D is equal to uh, 1.257 n meters. Okay, so this is our distance. Now, we have to um, find um, the work that's um, expended, right? The work that we add into the system. Uh, so our energy equation, we're going to start with uh, initial kinetic energy, um, T1, plus um, the work that gets us from 1 to 2. Uh, this is going to be equal to T2. Right? I'm ignoring uh, the potential energy because there's no change in potential energy in the system. So we just ignore it. We just keep track of the kinetic energy and the work. So we know that T1 is zero, right? Because this is given in the question because we do not have um, any velocity, any rotation uh, initially because it starts from rest, right? So we just have these two terms over here, kinetic energy final and the work required to get us from the initial state, the stationary state, to the final um, state where we're rotating. Now, the work from 1 to 2 um, we discussed is just the force times the distance. So work from 1 to 2 is equal to um, the force, um, which in this case uh, is uh, the force P, times the distance D. Right. Um, so this is going to be equal to 400 newtons times 1.275 n meters. Um, and this is again going to have units of joules, right? So this is the work. We have an expression for the work. Now we have to find an expression for the final kinetic energy, right? And as you remember, the kinetic energy has a for the following formulation, 1 half um, i omega squared. Now I have, this is just in terms of omega because this system is not translating. The CG is stationary, right? It's just staying uh, still over here. It's just going to rotate. So that's why I just have the one half I omega squared term. And we need to figure out what I is. Um, so the inertia is equal to, so this is, we're going to, we're given the radius of gyration. So 
i is equal to mk squared. Um, and if we plug in uh, 15 kilograms times 0 0.6, which is k, the radius of gyration, which is unit meters, and then we square that, um, it gets us an i of 5.4 uh, kilograms meters squared. Okay, uh, and again, T2 is going to be equal to 1 half I omega 2 squared, and um, this is going to be equal to um, 1 half times um, 5.4 kilograms meters squared times 30 radians per second all squared, right? Um, because this is the final angular velocity which we're given uh, in the question over here. So we can now solve, so this is just a number, right? Um, we can take this number, so we have this expression here um, for T2, and we have this expression over here for the work from one to two, and this is just an equation in one unknown, which is n, right? The number of revolutions or the number of circumference. So we can directly solve um, the following equation. So putting everything together, we get 400 newtons times 1.257 n meters is going to be equal to 1 half 5.4 kilograms meters squared times 30 radians per second squared, all squared. And we can solve for n. So n is going to be equal to 4.83 revolutions. And this is our final answer.